What's up, y'all? This is Sorry back with no reaction, y'all, from the Fat Man <clears throat> for a Fat Man podcast. I got no reaction for y'all from uh, Stephen Crowder, the Crowder bits. But before we get this reaction, y'all, please hit that like button and subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 700 subscribe by ending this month, so please do. We're at 680, I believe. So. Yep, 680. So that means we only need 20 more to go. So yeah, please share this video with everybody that you see. It's Tony to Scott to the Fat Man's podcast. And let's get up in this reaction, y'all. So it's from Crowder Bitch. Uh somebody asked me to put the original video in the link in the description. I I can do that if y'all really want me to. Um Y'all all y'all gotta do is really copy and paste the title in the search bar, but since y'all don't wanna do that, I'll just put the original link in the video. Um so the title of the uh, reaction is Women Tries to Fact Check Crowder on Male Privilege. Change My Mind Clips. And I believe he said two, I only watched like two seconds of it. I guess it's in two, uh, 2018. So this is what, four years ago? So yeah, let's get in here, y'all. What rights today in 2018 are afforded to men that are not afforded to women? I don't believe that there's systemic male privilege today. I'm not saying I'm entire, I could be wrong. I don't believe it though. And I, I would like to be convinced, or I'm certainly open to being convinced. Um, I feel your male privilege, privilege is a myth. I feel like only white men have that male privilege and that's what the focus should be on okay so bl there's no black male privilege no okay um we have some black men in, actually in the audience maybe they can come in afterwards i would be interested to hear their perspective <laughs> so white male privilege yes okay so what systemic white male privilege exists today what rights are afforded for example to white males that are not afforded to black males or to white males not afforded to black females let's divide everyone by race and gender at this point um in regards to like laws and things like that obviously the laws aren't like oh white men get this privilege and blah blah blah, blah. so in regard in regards to like technical terms it says like men it's laid out by laws really equally when it comes to the actual systems there's tons of black men crowding jails for an eighth of weed while you know white men have like weed parties and it's cool and that's their thing but like black men are automatically arrested for it so that goes into the whole like police brutality argument but so can i ask can i ask you that i've, I've, I've never heard of a weed party um you can ask one of them oh yeah you, can ask one. you mean one of the white males probably yeah yeah no, I don't. It's okay. I'll, I, we'll have someone come in afterwards and they can explain to me a weed party. So, um, <laughs> no, genuinely, this is yeah, this is not me being a sponsor. Kind of parties, fraternity brothers throw. I'm, I'm sure they do, but the, the premise before. was the idea, right, that black men are in prison for an eighth of weed. Do you have any statistical data to prove that black men with nothing more than an eighth of weed go to prison? I couldn't give you the exact statistics, but there are several accounts of it, and it's not unknown. It's pretty much common sense that blacks are way easily more arrested than white men. Well, it, it, apparently it's also been common sense that the majority of women were pushing for the right to vote and that white men didn't support them. So we're trying to deconstruct some of these ideas that people maybe assume are common sense, but are factually inaccurate. Now, uh, the truth is men as a whole are much more likely to be incarcerated than women. Okay. Men as a whole, even white men, uh, get far more harsh sentencing for the same crime as well, women. white men are shooting up schools, so... <laughs> I think they should have a harsher punishment. Well, hold on a second. I mean, black, black, hold, 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 hold on, but, hold on a second, but black men are shooting each other in record numbers as well. That's not really relevant to the point. You were asking for the facts, and they're right here. Let me see. From, okay, so hold on, hold on one second, hold on one second. From the NAACP, you said for an eighth of, I want to make sure we're really clear here. You said white men are having weed parties, and a black man with an eighth of weed will be incarcerated in a federal prison. So what I have here is your source from the NAACP, I mean, from the NAACP, in 2014, African-Americans constituted 2.3 million or 34%, 64% of the correctional population. Okay, African-Americans are incarcerated at more than five times the rate of whites. Now, nothing here at all involves behaviors or crimes committed. I'm trying to look for anything in here that relates to black people being sentenced 
simply for an eighth of wheat. So this is from the NAACP. That would be as biased of a source as you could use. <laughs> but I don't see it. I don't see it. Show me, give me, I would like to see, I would be very open to hearing the statistical reality. I'm not trying to be, I would, I'm not trying to be confrontational. I would like to hear that stat. I think it's horrible. I don't think anyone should be arrested for an eighth of weed or put in jail. I think we can agree on that, right? No, I agree. Whether they're white or black. Yeah. I think, yeah. I don't think white people should be shooting up schools, whether they're white or black. Mm -hmm. So again, the systemic differences we're talking about, you know, men, period, are more likely to be incarcerated than women. Yeah. Men are more likely to be physically assaulted than women. So we're getting into this. First off, this is data. But when we get into the anecdotal that, well, white men tend to have it better because they can walk around and have weed parties, that's not necessarily accurate. So particularly when we're discussing an issue as sensitive as race, gender, and systemic oppression or inequalities, don't you think it's really important that we get that correct and the premise correct before we go off and divide people by these subcategories? Yeah, but I think there's tons of statistics out there already. and. Even if you don't want to look up the statistics, it's not hard to see how many black men are in jail at larger rates than white men. Do black men commit crimes uh, at a higher rate than men? Definitely not. That's no. just not true. <laughs> no? No. No, so you don't, black men do not commit crimes at a higher rate than white males? No. Okay. Do you have statistics that would reflect that? I mean, I'm sure I could look them up, but it's definitely not true. It's because racism, racism is built into the system. That's what... The system of is built against blacks, and that's what racism is. That's why there are more blacks in prison. Okay. Well, it seems like we've gotten away from male privilege, and now we've gotten to, to black-white. Uh, but I'll, I'll go with that, if, if you'd like to. Um, and I don't just... I'm, like, dead serious. I, I couldn't have... I couldn't have no girls around me like this. I, I really can't. I, it's kind of irritating to be honest. I agree that there have been horrible instances of racism in this country, including, by the way, in Canada and, of course, in Europe, the British Empire. I, I, and by the way, I hope you understand I'm certainly not a slavery or racism apologist. I think that's bad. I think racism is bad. But you just mentioned that. Well, I, someone else was just earlier was saying that uh, he, I was. Is okay with rape, which I'm not, simply because I believe there needs to be proof for rape. Um, so I think racism is bad. If we can all agree that racism is bad, you say the systems are racist and set up. Okay. Um, what systematic racism do we have today, then, in that case? Um, the system... <clears throat> the system is built against... So it all, it all goes back to slavery. Um, colored people... People of color, sorry, have never been... Careful, <laughs> careful, colored people, it's people of color. One's racist, one's okay now. Yes, people of color is the correct term. Uh, people of color have never been given an equal opportunity. They've never been given the equal opportunity for jobs because they, after racism was abolished, uh, came segregation and then Jim Crow and separate but equal so people of color have never been given the same opportunity as white people which is why it's been built into the system in, in 2018 ma'am you said racism has been abolished what are you talking about you know you don't even know what you're talking about you said you're talking about segregation or slavery you're talking about slavery or segregation what, what are you talking about <laughs> Okay, and that's why I couldn't hang around these females. I don't know what they're talking about. And she's just talking just to be, I don't know, like one of them, one of them, I don't know. One of them white people that's for, for black folks and all the other stuff. But I, I, I really don't, I've never understood that, like, even when black people do it, it's, it, 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 it irritates my, my soul sometimes, too. Dean, do you believe that's true? Yes, it's still, it's still. Can I ask you, can, 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 can I ask you a question? You're at, here at, T, did you go to TCU? Yes. <laughs> at TCU, do you know if there uh, is any affirmative action, for example, grants exclusively given to people of uh, African American heritage? Uh, I'm not sure if we have in place affirmative action, but I know we do have the chancellor's 
uh, what is it called? The community scholars? Community scholars, yeah, which is put in place to help get minorities into college. Right, so uh, yeah, so there are grants and scholarships, I think we would agree, across this country yeah. for minorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, it, and those wouldn't have to exist if it wasn't the system. <laughs> but will we if not say that's... If it was equal, then those scholarships wouldn't exist, which is why we have to have those scholarships. So these, I just want to make sure that I, I understand these scholarships correctly, because I don't intend the school. So these are, you said it's the community grant for my, it's, uh, is that what it's called? Community scholar. Community scholar, and this is a, exclusively for minorities to try and get it's them on not campus. Exclusively for minorities, there are there is. Um, it's majority minorities, but you can be any race yeah. and get this scholarship. Yeah. Okay, so this is something specifically to the school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To Mostly, the school. if you come from a lower um, <coughs> economic standpoint. From a lower economic standpoint. Okay. <laughs> are there or are there not grants, for example, or laws in place? We know affirmative action. Uh, that would be granted exclusively toward minorities. It seems in this case this one may not, but are you aware that those exist on campus? Yes. Okay. So when you say minority, that would be excluding people who are not minorities for this grant or scholarship, correct? Yes. Is that discriminatory? No, because it's uh, it's fighting against the system of racism. People well, I'm not asking about the system of racism. I'm asking is by definition is that discriminating against groups of people for this grant? No. What is the definition of the word discrimination? Well, let me look it up. Okay. Um, I would venture would be something along the lines of discerning or excluding certain parameters or qualities from a given uh, opportunity. Unjust or prejudicial treatment of different categories of people or things, especially on the grounds of race, age, or sex. Okay. So excluding people based on race. It says unjust or prejudicial. This is from Merriam-Webster. It's from... Uh, okay. Here, let's, I, I appreciate it. So the, the idea is, the way. point is there's discrimination occurring there. Is no, there anything like that for white that's students? Unjust. That's not unjust because it's making it equal for minorities. It's making it equal? Yes, because they don't have an equal chance in our society. How do they not have an equal chance to get to TCU? What do you think? We're trying to explain to you right now. What have we been talking about this whole time? Well, I'm looking at several black people here who've made it to TCU. Several black people? I'm looking at a sea of white. I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> He's I guess you're a figment of our imagination. <laughs> well, hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Sorry, you're Asian, so I guess you don't count because there are too many of you on campus. Uh, I'm saying I'm looking at many. There's a guy biracial right here. Um, no, listen, there have been people coming in and out. The point is, many of these people disagree. They believe they can get into to school. They don't believe there's systemic discrimination. There are white people that can get in, so there's more white people. There are more white people in this area of town. And we've gotten away from male privilege. We talked about white privilege versus black privilege. Is now what we're talking about. Or people of, people of color. Is people of color, is that the term you prefer? Sure. Well, I don't know. I know some people prefer black, some people prefer people of color. I would like to go back to the idea of male privilege. I still haven't heard a right afforded, or same thing with race. I still haven't heard a right afforded to someone uh, who is a white male not afforded to, say, a black female. I think, and I think that's pivotal if we're going to talk about systemic discrimination. I'm sorry, my knee touched you. I apologize. I, me I meant nothing by it. I just have wide legs. But we don't agree that that's pivotal for going to say there is systemic discrimination that needs to be just that needs to be rectified. We would need to be able to find in 2018 at least one example of systemic discrimination. Okay. How many of our presidents have been white and male? The last one was black. <laughs> one. <laughs> out yeah. of 45. One out of 45. And I would argue he was terrible. I would I would definitely not argue that. I'd argue Obama was one of our best presidents. Okay. Well, that's fine. And isn't it wonderful you can have that opinion, right? You can have that opinion and I can have my opinion, but wouldn't that be proof that there are no more barriers to entry if a black man yeah, made it to the highest office in the land? There's a study by, um, I forget what his name is. Relax. Well, it's, <laughs> does she seem nervous? Is that no, what? him. He needs to relax. Oh, he needs to relax. What did he do? I mean, she's trying to get her point across. He just needs to let her say it and relax. it'll be fine. <laughs> there's, a, there's lots of countries where they... If... <laughs> If you were her for if if I was her friend, right, I would tell you, you know what, you know, we gotta stop this. We gotta stop this. You know what? I um I feel like we're getting destroyed. You know what? You know, we we we'll we come back, we'll do a little research or something like that. We'll come back, I don't know, make an excuse to say, you know, we gotta get to class or something. 
Come on now, this, you, you, this girl wrong. Just let her get the, just let her get their point across. And oh my God, well, ma'am, you tell your friend to come on. Tell your friend, you know, we 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 about to go. You know, this this ain't cut out for us right now. I ain't no real friend. Yeah, I don't think this white girl don't know what she's talking about. To be honest, like. You know, I don't, I don't, Obama was not one of the best presidents. You need to stop with all that. See, she, she don't even know nothing about what uh, Obama did. And then why, why they study changing the, they just changed the whole, the whole, the whole conversation of black and white, black and white, um, black and white instead of male privilege. Cause they didn't have no defense. They didn't have no conversation, no conversation. They didn't have no, uh, they didn't have anything to back up what they're saying about male privilege. That is, is there male privilege? So now they're turning to black and white. The black girl the, or biracial girl, she the one who changed it into, changed it to black and white. Cause she didn't have no, she didn't have no, First, she said, uh, uh, white male privilege. Oh, 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 okay. Me personally, I don't think, I don't think there is male privilege. Uh, you know what I mean? If that's the case, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be, men wouldn't be dying at higher rates than women, all that other stuff. And you know what I mean? There's so much stuff that men go through all that. But all right, yeah, let's get back up in here. They elected one minority president and then went all the way back to electing all white presidents. They say they're, uh... Careful, because you're treading on some ground that could make you sound very racist here, and I don't think you're aware of it. Maryland's not going to come across no. as racist. So. Yeah, some, of what, some of what's been said here, kind of racist. Your white well, opinion of racism me. doesn't <laughs> racism really... Racism is a that's no. that's, that's kind of that's a little that's, 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 that's okay. I'm, I'm cool with it that's a little bit racist oh, okay i just want to get out here that reverse racism is real i know you're all gonna yell at me no no, no i didn't no no listen i would never use the word reverse racism saying your white opinion racism doesn't matter is not reverse racism at all no it's not racism. that it doesn't matter it's just it doesn't compare Okay, how, I, how so? Like how you're trying to tell her is? what she's saying is racist. That's no, like no, I said it could come across racist saying they may, they never vote in another black president again. How people don't ever vote back. You know, that could that could come across as racist. How? Because of such a poor performance from a black president would be the no, implication. But his poor I don't performance is racist. like your opinion. I don't, exactly, it is my opinion. And it was the opinion of many, many millions of Americans who voted in an old white guy, unfortunately, over a woman. Sorry, maybe we'll have a female president next corner. I'd gladly vote for a female president. I actually was a Carly Fiorina guy. I really liked her. I think she would have made a fantastic president. But I do find it interesting right here where you just said that your white opinion isn't comparable. <laughs> I, I, I don't, the word comparable is interesting to me. Why would you use that choice of words? Because what, what is your understanding of racism in comparison to somebody who's a person of color? This, we're both human beings with opinions on an issue. Yeah, but you play into the system and we're trying to fight against it. So why would... How, how would you know that I play into this? How do I play into the system? You're a conservative Republican. Like, <laughs> you don't... You don't know anything about me. You're sitting yeah. here saying that male and privilege is a myth. Yeah. And that rape culture isn't a problem on U.S. campuses. And so you, you just said I am a part of a system which you just declared racist. You said I'm an active part in a racist system. That's, that's a really terrible thing to say about somebody. Well, is it... It's true. Untrue? <laughs> yes. No, then prove it. Well, you want me to prove? Okay, you want me to disprove your prejudicial statement based on my race? Let me give you my best shot. I'm actually a French Canadian, or an English Canadian who was raised in French Canada. Are you aware of the language police? No. Okay, so let me talk to you about a little bit about discrimination. We're actually not allowed to attend English schools. We're not allowed to open a restaurant with an English sign if there's an apostrophe S. They thought I was learning able, disabled until the fourth grade because I was forced to go to French schools and learn math, geography, and history in French by law because if you are born in Quebec, you have to attend French schools. This comes from a theory they call pure laine, which means pure wool, pure European French blood wool. 
And so this is actually something, yeah, it's enforced by the language police. Where I grew up, they thought I was learning disabled as an English Canadian, being forced to go to public Catholic schools at a Protestant English-speaking Canadian, and they thought I was learning disabled until the fourth grade. I lived in an 82 Datsun for several months uh, as I tried to make something myself and dropped out of college and moved to the United States when I was 18 years old. So I certainly wouldn't say that I'm someone who's uh, been raised in the lap of white American Republican privilege. By the way, there are no Republicans in Quebec. There are only liberals and liberal separatists. None of what you said had to do with racism or uh, anything It had to do all. with discrimination, with prejudice. Okay. I would say there's an English speaking- But you're still a white man in this society, so you're you're good, your privilege is safe. I, I, would say, I would say this, and I, you're not going to like this, but I would say a white uh, male, regardless of white male, black, I would say white speaking English Canadian, living, being raised in French Canada, yes, would face much more systemic oppression than you here in college campus. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so it's easier being you, a white person in America, than me, a white person in I mean, a no. half white person in America. Your half white person in America? No, I was talking about my upbringing because you said you're playing into the system. You're a white male conservative Republican. Yeah, I don't care about what if the I were background. A white, what if I were a white male Democrat? What if I were a Then I would hope that Democrat? you would be fighting the system. What system? And trying to We've change. This, this lady just have no accountability for what she said. She's not. She, I hate people like this people. I hate them like that. I guess I shouldn't hate them, but y'all know what I mean. I don't like kind of people. I don't like people like this. She knows she's wrong. She don't want to take no accountability and say, you know, uh, my bad, my bad. I didn't mean to like that, or my bad. I'm sorry that I, uh, I'm sorry that I said that. Something like that. God damn, she's going like she's just gonna keep on going that deep, a uh, deep hole, a deep. I don't know what you call them, uh, uh, a crater. It's like, damn, she going to the uh, depths of hell. It's like, man, she just keep on digging herself in a hole. And I, I really do not like these kind of people, man. I really don't. Damn, Stephen, uh, Stephen kind of went through some stuff, though. I, you really can't say that he a white male, you know, you know, grew, grew up with a gold spoon in his mouth. Well, right, yeah, let's go back up here. The, it, what system? the systematic racism what in America. Systematic racism? I just need one example. And why did she? Why did she say that he was? He was part of it. You trying? He, he having conversations with you? You you going to the school? Did you do affirmative action? I'm pretty sure you didn't. They said I think they said they didn't have affirmative action up in there. See, so on your way to college, most what most people do, what most white people do, uh, most white people are not the one percent, ten percent. uh most of us in the whole world are average. Um, I don't think they think about killing you, the average person. Um, I guess. Okay. Well, police happens. brutality. Okay. Police. Stop it with that damn police brutality. It's not that much as your people think. That's so what we could say. I could say. I could say. Uh, uh, my community just killed uh, a uh, hundred rappers in in the last in the this whole year. Like, take a pop smoke. I'm pretty sure y'all. I'm pretty sure none of y'all really know who that is. But if y'all do, y'all know what I'm talking about. Pop smoke, TikTok. I mean TikTok. Take off just recently. PNB Rock last last month. All that. Like, come on now, stop it. Police brutality. Again, with the, the sign is about male privilege, but you seem to really focus on the race issue. So let's talk about police brutality. How is that? So the example of sis, the system that you say I play into in the, here proactively in America, police brutality is an example of systemic discrimination, white male privilege. Yes. So. Because black men are killed at traffic stops, black women included. I mean, there are unjust killings in jail that mysteriously, I mean, these men kill young black men and then walk free like your life and your privilege is fine but black people are dying so you you believe that it's okay it's legal to kill a an innocent black male and it's happening in record numbers yes. because we're white not because you're white but because the system is racist what if i were to tell you that statistically that's untrue then i would want to know the statistic yeah what if i would tell you that actually white males are more likely to be shot by police Okay, why wasn't the Florida shooter shot dead then? 
Well, uh, we're, we're getting in the anecdotal. Okay. So statistically, empirical <laughs> data would say that actually white males are more likely to be shot by the police. Okay. But I just completely disagree with that, and I don't know where your statistic is coming from. Okay. Well, I, I, let's. Uh, I, I think we have some other people who would like to discuss, but okay. it, if you disagree with the statistic, and this is the problem I like. I mean, I don't like about Steven Crowder. He should about. He should at least gave her some sources to go check it out. I think that's what she said. That's what he should have done to uh, gave to her. Um, that's one thing I, I I just don't like when he do, he when he does that kind of stuff with this in the interview and not give her give him any uh, give her any sources or anything. You know what I mean? So he, so she could come back like, oh damn man, you're right and stuff like that, and then she could do her own research and get some other sources or something like that. I think that's the best thing to do. Um, I think it's horrible if anyone is shot, an innocent person yeah. shot by the police. No, I think totally. we use better training with a lot of police officers. De-escalation, I think that should be used with white or black people. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing, um, if, if, if I may, because, sorry, did I step on your foot? No, you're fine. Oh, there's a walnut here. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one thing, if, if I may, um, if the goal is to have a conversation, I really do want to have a conversation. I've tried to be respectful. Just as I'm sure you would probably be more defensive or less, uh, less capable of having a civil dialogue with someone if they said well you're you can't possibly understand because you're you're a black woman you don't know anything about this i'm sure right away you might say well hold on, what do you mean by that coming into a conversation with someone where you don't have empirical data or evidence i've presented some you've disagreed with some you haven't presented much of your own but saying that someone's opinion simply isn't comparable because they're a white male a is not a valid argument i hope that's not one that's taught as okay in college and it's also not something that's going to convert anyone to your way of thinking you know, the idea is to change my mind. I will tell you, I, I appreciate you sitting down and doing it, but that is probably the least effective way to enter a conversation if you're looking to change someone's mind, to say, you're wrong or you don't know because you're a white male. So I would hope that moving forward that maybe you might reconsider your, your, your tact because you seem well, like, like, you seem very much like, like a nice lady. I don't think you're aware of that, but um, it shuts down dialogue before it begins as opposed to encouraging it. She was I think, I'm not going to say what she was trying to say, but I'm going to say I think what she was trying to say is you don't understand what it is like to be oppressed because you are a white male. Mm -hmm. White males are not oppressed. Yeah. First off, I'd, I'd like her to explain her position. No, you don't I agree exactly with her. what Marilyn said. It seems a, little, seems a little like, what do we call it, white explaining? I, I told her, I said, I think this is what she was trying to say. That's why I didn't say, I think this is what she said. But do you, do you not believe that she can articulate? I don't I don't want her to feel as though she's being misrepresented. I'd I like don't. to articulate her own thoughts. I feel totally fine. I agree with what Marilyn We're said, friends. and that was what we I was know. saying. Let me ask you this. Um, because we've talked about data, we've talked about the facts, which you said you don't have in front of you, but uh, let's not take my word for it. Uh, so you just said white men can't know what it's like to be oppressed. Do you believe that as an emphatic factual statement that there are no white men in this country who could know what it's like to be oppressed or maybe haven't had some hard breaks? They've had hard times, but they're definitely not oppressed. Okay. That's fair. I appreciate it. I would, di I, I would, dis I would disagree. I think everyone has privilege in different facets. And I think on campus, I think uh, women and people of mi minority people have uh, privilege that the average white male here probably doesn't. What, what privileges do we have that they don't? Scholarships, grants, the ability to they shout have, people down, tell I, them they I, don't have, they're not no, have a right no, no, to an no, opinion no. because no. they're a white male. No. I would never even dream of telling either of you no, that your no, opinion no. isn't valid because stop. you're stop. a woman, stop you're black. Stop no, that's not allowed. You're not allowed to tell me to stop talking. Sorry. If I were to do that, you'd say that that's white male privilege. So I appreciate it. The conversation is kind of over. It's not going anywhere. Thank you. It's over. Thank you. How are we given scholarships that all these other people didn't have the right to give? We earned that. We were in the top of our class. That's how we earned those scholarships. We were smart. We were smarter than them. That's how we Here it comes. So, are you saying black people are not as smart as white people? Ah, I hope Steve Crowder can get on that. <laughs> Well then, what? Then let's well, just let. Great! I think everyone on here is on board with scholarships for the smartest people in any class, male, male, female, black or white. I don't think race or sex should even come into the equation. So good, we agree. We found common ground. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't know where she got off. I don't know where females get off trying to kind of shit some man. I don't know where you get that off. I don't know where you get that from. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know.
Uh, but I think Stephen Curry. I think that I think he should like. I know sometimes he does put out. He does put out facts and stuff, and he uh, cites his sources and everything. But I think he should. He should have gave her some because I feel like they were both being, both didn't know what they were talking about or being, um. They didn't know what they were talking about, so I think Stephen Carter should gave them some sources where they can research themselves, and then after that, they can find some other sources maybe that disagree with it, or maybe, well, maybe she just did the did, did, did research and he was right. You know what I mean? That's me, me personally. I think that's what he should have done. Um, the white girl really, did, the white girl was the one that really was talking. The the black girl was, uh, she was just sitting there, and I think she should have told her friend, you know what? Calm down. You know it's time for us to go. Like, like if I if I if I'm gonna lose the debate, I'm like, you know what? You know what? Not a debate. I guess it's just a little, I guess I don't know. The change of mind thing. I'm like, you know what? You right. I'm. I. I don't know what I'm talking about. When we go do some more research, and I'll come back here in like an hour, or thirty minutes or so, if you're still here, something like that. You know what I mean? Just do a couple sort sources and stuff like that. Then you'd be good. Um. Uh, Stephen Carr did have a point though about the. Uh, uh, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't. Me personally, I don't think I'm oppressed. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that do do believe they're oppressed, but no man's gonna hold me down. No man's gonna hold me down, and no, I wouldn't even say that. Um, I wasn't taught that. Uh, I never, I never heard of that. You know, only time I heard about all this stuff, I'll tell you, when I grew up and started watching like. When I grew up, like in like high school, I started hearing about all this racism stuff and all the other stuff and stuff like that. I ne- when I was younger, I never heard of it. You know what I mean? We never we never talk about this. My mom, my dad never talk about the white man will kill you and stuff like that. Like we, I've never heard that when I was younger. You know what I mean? The only time now is because you know. The George Floyd thing, you know, your mom is concerned about that. You know, they out here trying to kill you and stuff like that. But like, you know, I tell them, no, they ain't trying to kill me. Most cops, I most cops I met are cool. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't like cops. I don't know why. The only reason why cops get the bad rap is for bad cops. So it's just that's a small majority. Most of the cops I know are really nice. You know what I mean? They got their families. They're just trying. They're just trying to live it for the next day, you know what I mean? They ain't worry about killing a black man, you know what I mean? I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say, I'd probably say 2% of all cops, you know what I mean? And I'm talking about the whole United States. <laughs> but right, yeah, that's the end of the video. Yeah, y'all tell me what y'all think up in the comments. Please hit that like button and subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 700 subscribers by the end of this month, so please do share it with your family, friends, whoever you see. But hey, y'all, I'll size out for the Fat Man's podcast, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out, y'all.